Good day and welcome. Today we are discussing the fascinating world of levers. Levers are simple yet powerful tools that make our lives so much easier. Imagine being able to lift heavy weights with minimal effort. What is a lever? How do levers work? What are the parts that make up a lever? And what is mechanical advantage? These are some of the questions we will answer today including single levers and linked levers. Do not forget to stick around until the end. We have some fun questions for you to test your skills before we reveal the answers. It's a great way to see how well you have grasped the material and boost your confidence for those upcoming tests and exams. Today's lesson is just the first part of our exciting series on levers. We'll be delving deeper into this topic, so be sure to check out the links in the description for more details. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos. Alright, let's get started on this journey together and discover the incredible ways levers can make our tasks easier. Ready? Let's go! Mechanical systems are called machines. Machines are made up of a combination of mechanisms. A mechanism is any device with moving parts that is used to make work easier using less energy. Mechanisms are divided into five groups, the wheel, screw, wedge, inclined plane, and lever. Levers are mechanical systems that allow work to be done more easily. Machines all contain mechanisms. For example, a bicycle is a machine that uses mechanisms such as wheels, axles, and gears to make it easier for us to ride from one place to another. Mechanisms are not freestanding but are found within structures. Mechanisms can only work if some form of energy is applied upon them. We call this energy the input, which gets the process going and results in an output. The pedals and gears of a bicycle form a mechanical system. The most basic part of this system is a lever. When a number of levers are joined together, they are called linkages. For example, levers and linkages are used to move a bicycle. When you ride a bicycle, the input movement is your feet driving the pedals, and the output movement is the bicycle moving forward. How does a lever work? Well, we use levers to lift heavy weights with the least amount of effort. A lever is a rigid bar that turns around a fixed point called the fulcrum. The fulcrum, or pivot, is the fixed point where the rod pivots or rotates. You can also say this is the part where the lever will balance or turn. The load, or resistance, is the scientific name for the weight. This is the object that is being moved or lifted. The effort is the amount of effort used to push down on the rod in order to move the weight. This is the force that is used to move the load or the resistance. When you push down with a force on one end of the lever, you are putting in effort. The effort you put in will cause the other side of the lever to lift up, causing whatever was on the other side to lift or move. As we have seen, the weight of the object you are trying to move is the load. A small effort can move a large load when you use a lever. Effort is also the input, which is energy or movement put into a machine. All levers contain a resistance arm and an effort arm. The effort arm on a lever is the part of the lever where you apply force, called the effort, to move or lift a load. You can also say the effort arm is the distance from the fulcrum to the effort. The resistance arm on a lever is the part of the lever that carries the load you want to move, also known as the load arm. You can also say the resistance arm is the distance from the fulcrum to the load. The resistance is the force that the lever must overcome to move the load. Output is energy or movement that is the result of a machine doing work. It is believed that in ancient Egypt, Builders used levers to move and lift pillar stones weighing more than 90,000 kilograms during the building of the pyramids. 
Mechanical advantage is a concept that describes how machines or mechanisms make tasks or work easier. For example, to reduce the effort needed to lift a weight resting 1 meter from the fulcrum, you can apply a force 2 meters from the other side of the fulcrum. The amount of work done remains the same regardless of the lever's dimensions, but the lever allows us to trade effort for distance. A lever allows us to trade effort for distance by enabling us to apply a smaller force over a longer distance to achieve the same effect as applying a larger force over a shorter distance. If you push down on one end of a long lever, you can lift a heavy object on the other end with less effort than if you tried to lift it directly. This trade-off means that while you use less force, you have to move the lever a greater distance. Using a lever gives mechanical advantage, enabling you to move or lift something that would be too difficult without it. The advantage depends on the length of the lever, the position of the fulcrum, and the positions where the force and load are applied. To achieve mechanical advantage with a lever, the effort arm must be longer than the resistance arm. This configuration allows you to apply less force to lift or move a load. When the effort arm is longer than the resistance arm, it means you are applying force farther from the fulcrum compared to where the load is placed. This lever arrangement makes it easier to lift or move the load. If the length of the effort arm is greater than the length of the resistance arm, the mechanical advantage is greater than 1. This means the force needed to lift the load is reduced, making the task easier. Levers give us advantage in the following ways. They are used to move heavy loads. They can be used to change the direction of motion. They allow for change of force for gaining distance. They can change distance for gaining force. A single lever or beam is sometimes simply called a lever. A lever is a beam or bar that rotates around a point of support. The point on the lever where you apply pressure is called the input. The point that supports the lever is called the pivot or fulcrum. The result happens at a point, called the output. The ways the effort, fulcrum and load are arranged classify them into three categories. They are called the first class levers, second class levers and third class levers. We will discuss these in detail in our next video. Examples of single levers include the following, a seesaw, a crowbar, a hammer claw for pulling nails, a bottle opener, and a shovel used to lift soil. Some jobs require a few levers to be linked. A linkage is made of two or more levers that are joined. We call levers that are joined linked levers. With a linkage system, one or more of the rods will have a fixed pivot around which it moves, and the other rods will be joined with moving pivots. So, linkage means two or more levers that are joined. Levers linked in pairs are two levers that are joined and work together. A complex linkage is a number of levers joined together. Linkages are used to reach over distance, to change the direction of movement, to increase the degree of movement or to change the distance of movement. A linkage can change the direction of movement. A pushing movement can be changed to a pulling or turning movement. The pedal rubbish bin is an example of a linkage. You push the lever down, which results in a pulling force that lifts the lid up. A system diagram is a visual representation that illustrates the components, interactions, and relationships within a system. It helps to show how different parts of a system work together to achieve a specific purpose. A system diagram shows the lever's components, such as the rigid beam, fulcrum, effort, and load, their positions relative to each other, and the forces involved. It provides a clear overview of how the lever functions. So, a machine is a mechanical system which can be represented by a systems diagram. All systems have an input, process and output. A pedal bin typically consists of a hinged lid operated by a foot pedal mechanism. 
When the pedal is pressed, the lid opens, and it automatically closes when the foot is removed. The known parts of the pedal bin system include Input which is the human energy pressing on the pedal Process which is the linked levers that move Output which is the lid that swings open and closes when the input is removed We have come to the end for today But before we go, please attempt the following questions before the answers pop up you can pause the video as you go. This is an important section that consolidates what you have learnt. Also get ready for our next class, where we'll explore the amazing mechanics of levers. We will discover how the position of the fulcrum in a single first-class lever changes its mechanical advantage. Plus, we'll examine linked first-class levers through cool examples like paper scissors and secateurs revealing the secrets behind their efficiency. Don't miss this exciting deep dive into everyday tools. So, let us meet next time as we discuss this further. Be sure to check out the link in the description. Also, please do not forget to subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching and keep well.